Okay, so I'm going to do the, uh, the observer tool. So the observer exercise, if you're aware of anything, if you've got your eyes open and you're aware of an object, for example, there's a mug on the table, there's a phone on the table, or, there, or even if, you're, if there's a wall that you're just staring at a wall, or if you've got your eyes closed and there's images or thoughts or awareness of the body, all of those things, but it's easier to, to with your eyes open, looking at a, a mug or a wall or something. As you notice, so the thing with the observer is to notice that as you observe an object, like a wall or a mug, it's very, very clear. You don't have to use your thinking. No, th no thinking is required. That the, the mug on the table or the wall, you are not the, you are not the wall. You are the observer. You are observing the wall. If there's a mug on the table, you're not the mug, you're the observer. That, you don't need to think about that. That's a spiritual awareness, spiritual experience, that the, obse the observer of the wall is not the wall, or the observer of the uh, mug, you know, interchangeable, witnesser, observer. Um, so the next thing then, and I'll put a focus today on overwhelm and feelings and memories uh, or thoughts of the past or whatever, that might could be creating stress or any thoughts that are repetitive in mind. So next thing then is, so you're aware now that when there's observing of an object, it's clear in your experience that the object is not the observer. You are the observer, you're not the wall, you're not the mug on the table. So the next thing is just get a reading of what you're experiencing. Are you feeling, are you aware of the body? Are you aware of feelings? Are you aware of thoughts? Well, whatever it is, I mean, if there are thoughts running across the mind, well, thoughts are actually passing. You know, there's a thought like, uh, there's a thought the sky is blue, there's a thought that it's getting dark, there's another thought that it's getting late. Whatever the thoughts are, they are coming and going. So what observes thoughts? Can you be the observer of thoughts? So if you become, if you're, if you're the observer of thoughts, then it, or the detached observer of thoughts, it becomes very clear that thoughts are just like the wall in the room or the mug on the table. They're just things that pass by. They're not you because you're, you are the observer of them. I mean, can the, obse can the observer be an object that passes by? Well, it, if you use your experience, if, if a mug suddenly comes on into the room, you're, you're not the mug that suddenly appeared in the room, you're the observer of the mug. If a thought is just, if thoughts are just passing by, these thoughts are not what you are. In your experience, you'll recognize that you're the observer. And when you're in the, what I call detached observer of thoughts, it's, it's very, very clear that in a way, uh, you're not a victim of your thoughts. You don't need to give them meaning. You don't need to hook into them. You don't need to attach them. In fact, the more you detach, the more you let go of your interest in the field of thinking and the awareness of thinking, the more they disappear. And if you go to, and if the observing of thoughts, if there's still awareness of the observing of thoughts, then maybe you can go to the observer of that observer, which has no interest in thoughts. As you do this, as you go into more and more un uninterested fields of observing, where thoughts actually, there's no need to, be interested in thoughts or hook in or uh, assign meaning to any of the field of thoughts that go past, then you'll start to go into places of great stillness and peace or th thoughtless presence, which I'm sure you'll find if you've been heavily in your thoughts is, is very much an enlightening experience, not having to be the victim of the passing thoughts. Now, the body, is there awareness of the body? Well, if there's awareness of the body or if there's feelings in the body, if there's overwhelm or tiredness or exhaustion in the body, well, the body is just like a mug. It's an object. You know, if you're aware of the, the length or the height or the width of the body or the aware of the body on the chair, then that's an object that's being observed. So, or if there's just a strong feeling of tiredness. So can you be the observer of the shape of the body? Is, can you be the detached observer of the body? And what if there's exhaustion or tiredness or something uh, like that? 
Well, tiredness, ex exhaustion, or weariness, all of those things are just labels. So if you let go of the labels, they're like, you know, they're, they're, all, they're like clouds, they're like energy fields. But even if the um, uh, exhaustion or tiredness come, arises, or is here now, something observes that. You see, like maybe uh, six months ago, two years ago, there was no exhaustion or tiredness. So now that there is, it means tiredness and exhaustion come and go. They're passing clouds. So even if uh, tiredness and exhaustion seems to be here right now, something is observing that. So what observes uh, exhaustion or tiredness? Can you be the observer? Can you be the witnesser of this? Is the witnesser of tiredness or exhaustion or any sensations, or, uh, is the witnesser affected by what you would label as tiredness or exhaustion. Now, as you go to, if you can be the detached observer, that pure witnessing, that witnesses uh, things like exhaustion or tiredness, but is completely not them, is in this detached field, any uh, tiredness or exhaustion will start to disappear because it's like when any object is not given meaning or energy or is hooked into, it starts to disappear. It's almost like objects like the body, or like tiredness or exhaustion need some kind of hooking into for them to exist. When that identification is cut off, they start to cease, they start to disappear, which is a great thing if you want to let go of uh, tiredness, exhaustion, the body, thoughts, thinking, anything that creates limitation or suffering or contraction or the experience of a limited or separated sense of self that is somehow cut off from the rest of the universe. Uh, whatever it is that's experienced, is there something observes it? Like, do you ever feel like you're coming into the room or leaving the room? Well, what observes coming in or leaving the room? Is the observer of coming into the room or leaving the room? Can, is the observer ever out of the room or coming in or out of the room? So if you do this, you can see like the, the, any, sort of, any sort of experience, what observes it? What is the observer of experience? What is, what is witnessing or observing consciousness? So as you go back, you'll experience greater and greater uh, uh, levels of freedom and limitation. So whatever you experience, even if it seems very expansive, what's observing the, ex the expansiveness? Even if it's peaceful, what's observing the peaceful if the peace has any type of form? If there's any type of form or limitation, what observes. So now, as you do this, is there any experience of you being contracted, tiredness, exhausted? Are there any images of the past that haunt you? But what observes images from the past? Like if you had, um, I don't know, an argument with your mother and thoughts of that are coming and going. Do these affect the observer? Can the observer ever be affected by what happened in the past? Do images of thoughts have any relationship to the observer or the detached observer? Or is the detached observer totally free and not affected by any passing thought or image from the past? Okay, well, let's just um, spend a few moments in observing and then I will stop the recording now.